Hey everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Eternal Evolution. For today's video, we're going to check out the new Rise of Heroes update. They've changed it up a bit, so let's take a look. All right, so Rise of Heroes. So we know that they added a universal fragment. Now, universal as in all of the heroes so far that have been part of past Rise of Heroes events. I love this idea. It's so much better than them cycling through and forcing you to get someone that you already have an Immortal 5 of. Even on my free-to-play, I mean... We got so many copies of the champions just from doing the Rise of Heroes in the first place that they were Immortal Zero or Immortal One to begin with. And then they put them in the details gathering as another reward. And then you could start pulling them from other summons or like it's it was a lot, right? So I kinda like that now we have the choice. So this is really good even not only for endgame players that are like, oh my god, I don't need 20 more Karmas to add to my roster right now. <laughs> Or not Karma, sorry, Kalaza. But it's also really good for free to play because you can kind of pick and choose. So, the first part of this video, I want to discuss the heroes and kind of, I don't know, pick where, where you should be going with this. Maybe give you, maybe help people have an idea of who they should choose, especially if you're early on. So, now when we go through and do the boss stages, we're going to get these custom hero shards, and they are going to result in a a character just by getting the fragments like you would in other areas maybe like elite chapter for example sorry elite campaign elite campaign uh for example i should say but when it comes down to it i'd have to say my favorite champion from this pool is probably senway even before summoners became a thing he i think he was one of the first that came out like i mean we had mooka and then Randall was sort of a, like, he had a clone, and but and Kalaza was a summoner, but he was classified as a hunter at the time. And Senway came out, and Se Senway came out before Daniel, um, and he was really helpful for pushing content. I remember on my first main account, um, pushing through my campaign by throwing Senway in there. I think he he's a really good help, especially for early on, even if you do not have a summoner team. Now, if you're trying to decide who to get, I would say you'd get Kalaza if you already have an Anpu, uh, or if you're working on a nice turbine team and you've got like uh, Daniel and like Daniel, Senway, Kalaza are going to be really good for a turbine guild hunt team, but Anpu is not. But Kalaza is good with Anpu for sake of other content, just not really turbine because he pumps out a lot of clones as well or doppelgangers. So he's pretty good for a summoner team um, and, he, and he's better than Anpu alone in turbine. So I don't know, he's... He's really interesting. He's really good overall, uh, and I think he can help people push content if you do have a summoner comp. Senway, I think, is great for all the summoner comps as well, but he's also good even if you don't have a summoner comp, so that's something to think about. Old John here was put out. Personally, he seems fun, but I haven't seen him be insane for me. I haven't really... When I use my hunters, I find myself taking him back out and him not being the best option. But maybe with the some of the new stuff that it's been changing, they're constantly adding new heroes and new um, commanders and new prototypes. So he could be potentially more viable. But I kind of like my hunter team without him, honestly. But that depends. I have Emma and Azina and Moriyami and Prigor. So if you're lacking that and you need another strong hunter, he's probably going to do you pretty well if you're missing some of the core triple S champions. I do love Kane and Nagrama. Both of them are energy heroes, and they hit pretty hard. Honestly, I used Nagrama a lot pushing Twilight before there was a Nord in the mix. Like, Nagrama was in my team with Luke and Ravenna, and I think he did pretty good damage, honestly. I absolutely, I think all of the heroes, luckily, are great. Nafang is amazing for a Vanguard team. 
he brings a lot to a team and he's great just on my free to play he was my main tank that I was using instead of other tanks. I was using him and Leo, or before I got Leo, I was just using him. And he's awesome. So I really love this pool of champions. I don't think you can really go wrong. The only thing I would say is maybe not Kalaza. If you're not doing anything with summoners, I kind of think he's meh without it. Um, but everyone else can kind of fit into their teams pretty well. I think if I had to choose, my favorite is Senwei and my second favorite is Nafeng. Or maybe Nafeng than Senwei. I don't know. I like them both pretty equally. And on my free-to-play account, I saw a massive difference with Nafeng in the roster. And on my main account, before all these fancy heroes came out, when I had less triple less heroes as well, Senwei was a massive push for my campaign. So they're my favorite. Probably if I had to rank them, I would say Senwei, Nafang, Nagrama, Kane, Old John, Kalaza. But if you're going niche situations, Kalaza could be even more valuable for again turbine or specific summoner composition so keep that in mind that was a little bit of a lengthy discussion but there's lots to think about and you have to pick based on your roster and what you're missing like who you need to slot in to make one of your teams work the best it can so i'm gonna go through it looks like we have the same setup we're gonna go through we're gonna do our scroll we're gonna do all of our normal and then we're gonna do all of our hard stages and then we're going to um hit the stuff to sweep and then we'll check out the boss so i'm gonna pause go ahead and push my normal content and then i'll come back for this video all right so i've gone through and done all my basic stages so we've done all of these once and i cleared all of the hard ones once um oops this one i did not apparently oops i almost did <laughs> almost cleared them all once but this is really easy for most accounts they don't make this hard at all which is great even my free to play guys my second ever well my first ever twilight i was able to push through the whole, or twilight rise of heroes i was able to push through the whole thing not in not too bad of fashion um but this second one, I think I got stuck on like the very last one. So if you this is your first week of an account and you're stuck on the hard stage of like the very last one, just give yourself a couple days of account progression and you'll be fine. Uh, and now we're at, we got to talk about the bosses though, right? So we have the bosses to defeat. Now it looks like I can go right in and challenge the hard boss. I don't even need to hit the normal boss. So that's interesting. I have to unlock the hell boss by clearing the hard. Uh, and what we're going to do in order to get more tickets for beating the bosses is we're actually going to go ahead and we're every single day go to the top when you come into your game and buy all of the tickets. Then go to hard and then go ahead and sweep all three every single day. So we only have two today because I already did one manually. This is the first day of the event. But yeah, this, this guide for Rise of Heroes is, of course, geared more toward new players. Keep that in mind. Most experienced players will have already done this a few times and probably has the routine down. But if you're new, I mean, or if maybe you haven't seen people talk about it, this is something really important to do every day to get as many tickets as possible. So after you're done sweeping the hard stage, you go to normal and then you go to 1-10 and you sweep... And you sweep all them you can. All right, collect, sweep again. Collect, sweep again. Sweep again. <laughs> Every day, make sure you max out to where you have none of these left and you've grabbed everything from diamonds and then you go fight your boss stage. So what we're going to do, you're going to always do the hardest boss you can, but you don't have to use all of your boss tickets every day. So if you have a brand new account and you can only, and you can beat normal and you can do a little bit of hard, but not finish it, don't do it. Just do enough to get your daily done, to get your, your coins here. And that's it. Just do like the one beat a boss mission. Don't use all of them. Don't sweep on a low stage. Because more than likely, by the end of the event, you're going to be in a better position. Now, if you're pushing hard or hell and purgatory is just feels impossible 
it's fine, guys. Keep in mind, this is the boss that is exactly like Turbine in Guild Hunt. It's very much like Turbine in Guild Hunt, aka summons are actually the key. But, I mean, the targets prioritize summons here. But honestly, on my free-to-play account that I was playing before, I was able to beat the hell boss with, I guess I could show you. Okay, so this is obviously, this is the end game team that's going to do purgatory is this. Is this over there. Switch my pan. But, uh, um, this is hard, guys. It's the purgatory version is really hard. This is hard. Ha <laughs> ha We're on hard boss. Um, no, but don't, I should say, don't be like, why are you doing it with stuff we can't relate to? Not everybody has a full summoner team. If you don't have a full summoner team, you're not doing purgatory, let's be honest. Just do hell, it's not that hard. So, on my free-to-play account, I was using... I, was, I didn't have the dominant nucleus, which I have at a very high level here. Um, I didn't... I have... I do have a baby Masrani. I don't think I even needed him. I think on my free-to-play account, I used Kalaza with Ampu and Sorvali. And then I just used, like, Emma... Because a lot of people probably have Emma still, because it is, does make sense to get her. Because of the way the events are still, it does make sense to get Emma very early. I used Emma for damage. And then I think I... I don't even know. Who did I use? Maybe Senway once I got him, but maybe not Fung in the I don't even know, honestly. Or Artos, maybe? I think I used Artos. I think this was my team that I did Hell on. On my free-to-play account. I'll just put in a Turbine team. This is without Anpu and Sorvali. I mean, this is Turbine, so let's just go. <laughs> Obviously, I think I should have no trouble beating it. Ooh, what's our new little... Oh, fancy! Oh, we could change it in-game. Yes! Yes! Oh my god, I love this change. Do you want to see the buffs? Do you not want to see the buffs? They gave us the option. This is wonderful. Thank you, developers, for listening to us. Joystick version, I really don't like. It feels weird. Just, But it's good if you don't want to stretch around the board. Or uh, your board. Your display. This is really cool to see us be able to change things while we're in battle. So if you're doing a battle and the sound effects of the fight are getting annoying, you could just shut that shit off. I like it. I like it, and I love that we can now turn our buffs on or not on above the avatar or above the HP bar. Oh my goodness, I love that. Or both. I'm going to turn on both and see which one appeals to me. Uh, I love that. We need to be able to see our buffs and debuffs. Oh, I love that. Okay. It might be too busy. You know what? Yeah, I see this. I, okay. I don't think we need to see above the HP bar now, which can be busy on the screen. If we at least have it here, we need to see it somewhere. All right, I like it. All right, so let's say you could be purgatory. Like you... Well, it's hard. If you can't, don't stress about it. You don't need... By the way, guys, um, I should say this very clearly so you guys don't worry if you are new. If you have a newer account and you can actually get through hell and start sweeping hell, don't even worry about purgatory. Um, if it's really, If it's way too hard and you're like, I'm not even close to being able to do that. Don't worry about it. Just do hell. Sweep that every day. Don't it, pretend purgatory doesn't exist. You can still get through all of the stages of rewards very easily to get all the maximum stuff from the raffle just fine, even if you can't go ahead and sweep purgatory every day. So what I mean there is um, when it comes to the event missions, we're going to get a lot of stuff too. Make sure you try to do these daily. And then, of course, you're going to hit your milestones as you do more every day as well. But in the raffle shop here, the prize pools. So once you get beyond level fifth, round 15 of the prize pool resets, it's just the runes and then stamina and other stuff. You don't no, you no longer have the gene hybrid shards or the limited summoning tickets. And by doing the hell boss every day and sweeping the max as long as you're using your diamonds for those tickets and sweeping the stages first, you can do all of this and all of this 
and all of this with hell only. So just pretend purgatory doesn't exist if it's stressing you out. Of course, do it if you can, because it's only going to help you get more um, like yellow runes and stuff further on. But you at least want to make sure you're getting the best rewards possible. So what we're going to do is every single day, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make sure we're grabbing these 10 pops. Okay, look at we instantly got this, right? So it could be like, okay, reset. I oh, confirm. I don't want to go to the next prize pool here because I want to make sure I get all four of these guys. As you can see, four out of five are still left. So I'm going to keep grabbing these until I am done. We want to see that we have all of those grabbed. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, two more. Perfect. Now that we're zero out of five here and zero out of one here, that's when I'm going to go ahead and push the reset, but not until then. And I'm going to do that the same thing when it comes to the gene hybrid stage as well. So keep that in mind. Um, I mean, I, just, I would prefer to get all the yellow runes too, but I usually move on because we're going to be able to get more yellow runes as we go on the other stages anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. But these are really, you want to get those top two rewards maxed out before you go ahead and switch. Even if it tells you you should switch, I would not. Keep going. <laughs> Just because you get the fragments early doesn't mean you want to miss out on free summoning tickets. I mean, hello. That's how we get so many fun stuff. See, now I've already got my recruitment cards. So now I'm just looking for those fragments and we got them. So now I'm going to go ahead. Boom. Let's go on to the next one. So just kind of keep that in mind. Do this every single day, but don't worry. It actually does stack up. So if you're not pushing the bosses every single day because you're trying to progress from like if you're stuck on hard and you're trying to get to hell um, and you want to be able to sweep hell with one key first, then it's okay to wait and just do these all a little bit later but yeah i hope this was helpful guys i always try to do a rise of heroes guide with every single event because there's always new players and that m this might be your first rise of heroes event or maybe it's your second and you're finally like okay i need to pay attention to make sure i'm doing the right things but making sure you actually grab all the tickets every day is key so that way you can sweep the bosses and at least everything stacks up so you don't have to do them all right like when it comes to doing the bosses you don't have to use all your red tickets every single day you can wait to sweep later on but yeah all right that was all for today's video well again hope it was helpful thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one